welcome back to What Artie Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the 212A, it's the tier 9 Soviet SPG. It's located on the eastbourne of Studianki and it's under the command of Angelina 75. And the game's about to start. In fact, it's going to start rather quickly without any warning. There you go. Okay. Well, again, this is another replay sent in by Angelina to try and win the Weekend Lion. And she's tried the uh, 212A this time. But you know, uh, Talon's in the lead at the moment. He's managed to get a really good game in. And Angelina's tried to match him. He's got a second class and a confederate. At least I seem to recall he's got a confederate... And, of course, he's got a higher win eight than Angelina, which actually puts him in the lead. They both managed to get second classes and confederates, but just Talon was so much, got a so much better one. So she's trying to get a shot in, trying to get uh, another replay to, to get some good damage. She decided not to fire there because the 780 wasn't close enough. She's firing now, and it lands in front of him. She might want to head a little further north. It might be easier to get damage on that guy from further north. But there's also an object, um, 430, who's uh, north of the, uh, in the cops, north of the factory. And if you hit that guy, she might be able to get some decent damage because he's in, uh, he's been spotted by our teammates over there. Now the RT on the enemy team is a batch at 155.55. She's decided to move because mainly because I suppose she can see that there might be a better position to fire from. Yeah, she's gone a little further south. And she's actually looking at the enemy tanks down the south end of the map now. Object 780, a lot of those at the moment. I've heard that they're out, but um, oh, it looks like that shell hit the roof of the building. So she didn't get anything off it. In fact, I've absolutely no idea how you get a 780 because I haven't been playing the game that much recently. But I've heard that it's available to just about anyone who wants to get it. And in fact, there have been a lot of games with nothing but Object 780s in them. Okay, she's almost ready to shoot. Lines it up, rounds out. This should hit. Well, it lands in front of him. 178 so she's off uh, on the scoreboard now okay she's found an E75 standard reload time for this RT is in the region at 37.39 seconds by the book but because we're having to use a, a virgin client for this replay I'm afraid it can't tell you exactly what the uh, relay reload that Angelina's got but I think it's around the 20 25 second Okay, that was close to the 75. Again, that object 430 is still up there near the cops. He's a very good and viable target. He obviously doesn't want to move away from the cops, because if he does, he'll give himself a perfect target for the Strive K. And the uh, other tank there, which I think is, um, I'm not sure what it is actually, is that a T125? Just having a look now to see if we have a E5, oh it's a TNH TVS 51, that's what's up there I think. Okay, looking for another target. Unfortunately that this game is going to end very quickly without uh, Angelina getting much in the way of damage. We've got six down on the enemy. The enemy are, uh, are really losing tanks. And that 430 was taken out of the game. It was a T110 up E5 up there. Yes, so uh, my original guess of what it was was an E5. And the enemy just lost their arty, so she doesn't need to relocate to get uh, damage. And now she just needs to keep pumping those shells in to try and get damage on the enemy as soon as she can. Rounds out. This is better. Yep. Well, she stunned two there and damaged them, and she should get some stun assist off them. And we basically piled on through in the south, so 
really the enemies in a whole world of trouble now. It's 8-0. And Angelina's just not getting a whole lot of damage because, well, there aren't that many targets left. Okay. Loop the shell over the top into that yard if you can. I think that one's going to hit the wall if it does go out. Rounds out. Oh my god, it didn't. It went over the wall. But she's picking up stun assist, so that's that's going to help. And remember, the scores could be a bit higher because she did get some blind shots in. And she's picked up a load of stun assist now. But I think it's a little late now. Try it again. Maybe. There's only three enemy vehicles left now. She fires around in and stuns and damages them both, so she's going to get stun assist. Oh yes, masses of it now. Now it's paying off. Over 3,000 stun assist off that one. And the game's over. Here's the end of battle stats, and that was the second class tank for Angelina in the 212A. She managed to get a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits in this one. She managed to get seven, and she got a confederate as well, hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on her team. Her win eight from that one was 828, but that's well below the figure that Talon managed to get. Yes, he had a much higher one, over 3,000, I seem to remember, to actually get the, the high score that's currently running. And so, yes, I'm afraid being the last battle she's actually managed to send up. Well, she did send up the, the score page for one further result, but it was only a third class circle. She couldn't beat Talon. So he's definitely got the weekend lie in tomorrow morning. But uh, let's put the, uh, uh, the last replay up, which is another one I got from Talon. Yes, he sent us in one more. So we're doing a double header. Uh, we'll just see the end of battle results for this one first. You can see that Angelina managed to get 1,007 hit points of damage. The highest score was one of the 780s, managed 5,846. He picked up a high caliber and steel wall. The next one managed 5,518. And then the third one, also another 780, got 5,112. So it does seem that these tanks are very, very good. But somebody has actually told me they're very easy to set alight for some reason. Uh, we'll have to find that out when uh, I actually get my hands on one of these, maybe. But anyway, we'll see. When we come to kills, it's one of the 780s. He's got three kills. Uh, two on the uh, other one. And the Shiv K's got two as well. Uh, as well as the TNHT Viz 51, uh, the E4, and the Waffen Trager of Panzer Nobody on the enemy team managed to get uh, above one kill. In fact, only two of them got kills altogether. So it would have been a 15 nil, but for the fact, obviously, two of our guys got a little weak and they got taken out, I'm afraid. Uh, so, yes, we did suffer two losses, but uh, it was a very good game, very quick game. In fact, it ended up 15 2. Let's have a look at the detail. Angelina fired only eight shots, and I think that's the reason why her score wasn't that high. If she got a few more shots in, uh, maybe at that object 430, then I think she might have ended up with a higher score. But she only fired eight shots because she was moving quite a bit of the time. 1,000 and... Oh, she got 12 splash damage. So, yes, she was splashing multiple tanks with some of her shots. 1,007 hit points of damage. And all of it was done at more than 300 meters. She damaged six of the enemy, didn't get any kills, but she got 223 hit points of damage assistance and 3,318 hit points of stun assist off 12 stuns. She earned 45,785 credits from the battle, 50,000 for mission completion, 95,785 altogether, and after ammunition resupply, made a profit of 80,505 credits. 1,306 XP times 2 for the first victory, 2,613 experience points altogether. So that's uh, Angelina's game. Let's have a look at Talons. And we can see that Talons game is starting on the south spawn of Wilson. And he's in the Hummel with the stock gun. Well, he's placed a lot of the Hummel. I actually suggested to Angelina that maybe she needs to try and play some of the tier 5 arties because it's quite possible to get ace tankers fairly easily in the uh, tier 5s. Mostly I'd say in either the Gorilla or the AMX 13105 
Um, these are the tanks which actually, or RT uh, tier 5, which find it easy to do lots of damage. Mainly because the fire rate is so fast, especially the French one. It's only a 105mm gun, but it acts many, in many ways it acts more like a, a poor man's Fifi. Because that 105mm round goes out every 12 seconds or so. So you can get lots of shots on the enemy, but you don't get any stun assist. So you actually have to rely on actual damage rather than stun assist. That's where the gorilla comes in. If you can use the gorilla, that does give stun. And again, it's got a fairly fast reload. So it's fairly capable. Well, he's moving, relocating to avoid counter battery. And as you probably noticed, uh, lots of players are now doing this. They're now realizing why you have to move, why you have to avoid counter battery by relocating yourself. In fact, it's actually becoming very noticeable in real life that uh, if you don't relocate, Yes, somebody else will relocate you with their artillery. Okay, ooh, knocks the tree down but changes position. So if the enemy RT is trying counter battery, and the enemy RTs in this game are an FP304 and an M44, and I would expect the M44 to try counter battery, I would not expect the FP304 to do it. Because obviously he would have a bit of difficulty trying to uh, get close. And he got a direct hit there on the KB-2. Nice shot. He lined that one up. This IS-6 is asking for a shell. And remember, with the stop gun, you get much faster reload. You just do less damage. So you have to make sure each shot hits the best part that it can. Yeah, that IS-6 is not keen to take any further rounds. Let's wait for him to stay steady. Yes, he does do that. And he gets a shell direct hit. Again, changing positions. He's got plenty of time to do that. This Talon knows the key to actually getting accurate shots is letting it dial in on the target. He's ready to go. Going for the KV-2. Rounds out. Could hit the engine deck. It did, actually. Well, it was just behind the turret. It looked fairly close to the storage boxes. Okay, he's decided to stay where he is for the next shell. Try and get one on that Indian Panzer. Again, try to throw your shells around just a little bit to lighten things up. Because the more shells you hit, more tanks you hit rather, the more chance you've got of getting that Confederate. So that's why I say spreading the arty love all around, especially if you've noticed that in the uh, in the intros to the uh, our game, to on our channel. I'm just trying to make a point that uh, the more shells you send, the more chance you've got of actually earning a profit. Oh! Well, he stunned the E4, but not for long, and the E4 just managed to get a kill on our T150. So we're one down on the enemy at the moment, but Talent is getting damage. So go for his next shot. Looks like the IS-6 is just moving past. Rounds out. Well, he stunned both of them. But no stun assist. Okay, the other side of the battery got a Black Prince. The enemy is pushing. But I have the feeling they might actually be leaving themselves vulnerable. They're getting into the south area. Talon's looking for a target that he can hit. He's going to go through the roof and try and hit those tanks. And fires one in. Stuns the KV-2. Changes position again. Oh no, that was the enemy RT shot that actually hit the Nashorn. And that was definitely stunned, so it was the M44 who got the stun. So he's now trying to drop a shell in there, but he can't hit those guys. The roof's in the way. Okay, he's trying to get a shot on the Indian Panzer. Our teammates are coming up from, from the east side of the map and also from the south. And now the enemy's about to come through those doors. Okay, rounds out. Looks good. Perfect. 219 hit points, then he gets some stun assist. Just 
relocate a little bit because we know that RT is working in this corner of the map. Um, now we've got the IS-6 coming towards us, but he's actually looking at the Comet. The Comet's gone! Well, we've got this IS-6 coming towards us. He's almost fully dialed in. Fires quickly and gets a hit for 204. What he needs to do is get behind cover now and await that uh, IS-6 coming up. And he might be able to get a shot on the KV-2. There's the enemy RT trying to get a shot in. Okay, KV-2 is going elsewhere. We're about to put one in the face of the IS-6. Oh, it ran short. But he's gone. The M44 fired one at him and the Nashorn killed him. Which means now the enemies are disadvantaged because they're too down on us. And Alti's firing. Close, but no cigar. Okay, we are still stunned, but just wait for it to dial in. Okay, fires it in. Oh, and he got the stun assist off that one. The enemy RT is definitely focus focusing on us, but uh, I'm afraid it's too late for them now. Their teammates are all dead. And so it's a race now to get to the northwest corner of the map and to kill the FB304 and the M44. I think it's the P Panzer 58 Monsters has found the... FB-304 is just too far away for us to get an accurate shot. Yep, tiny distance more longer. We're, we're looking whilst we're moving. But he's found the other one, the M44. He just took a hit, ramps out. Shot's going in. Oh, it lands nearby, but he gets the stun assist. And the game is over with a victory. Well, Talon 1958 had a much better time with that game in the Hummel than Angelina did on Stud Yankee. Uh, he says he loves this little artsy. Well, he, he does play it rather well. And with the 15 centimeter shotgun, you actually do get good results because it's so quick to fire. He managed to get a first class tanker in this one, which is even higher than he did before. And he got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, he managed to get eight which means that he is the winner of the contest off this result alone because uh, all Angelina and Talon were able to get before was second class mastery but now he's managed to get a first class mastery which put him well in the lead and Angelina wasn't able to uh, best her score. Her, his win eight from this one, 1,181 which is good, it's about average really but obviously Talon can get ace tankers, he can get up as high as 3,000 or more on the win eights or from RT alone so uh, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, either Angelina or Talon actually come over with an ace tanker next week. Let's have a look at team score. Well, we can see it was a kind of middle of the road performance. 872 hit points of damage went for Talon. The high score in his team was the Panzer 58 Mutz, 2,352. He picked up a top gun, not a high caliber, a top gun out of that one. And his win eight was very high, 5,000. And when it came to uh, uh, the next high score, that was the Nashorn that was near him. Or was it? No, actually, it was the Super Pershing on the enemy team. Sorry. Uh, 2,823 went to him. And then we got the Nashorn with 2,056. Our um, Super Pershing actually managed to get a steel wall. And the enemy, uh, oh no, our Super Hellcat as well got a Confederate out of that one. And in fact, actually, we can see why. Because he actually hit 6 and 0. Talon wasn't spreading the RT love around quite enough to actually get that Confederate. We'll see that any, uh, in a short while. When it came to kills, it was the, the Panzer 58 Mutz who got seven. Three kills went to the Nashorn, the Super Pershing, and the Super Pershing on the enemy team. And two kills went to the Black Prince and the Indian Panzer on the enemy team. When it came to base XP, it's actually the Panzer 58 Mutz again with 1,360. So he got the top in all three columns. 949 went to the Nashorn and 856 went to Talon. Now he fired 14 shots, much more than Angelina. He, she only managed to get eight shots fired, which I think is why her score was a little lower. If she managed to get, say, 10 shots in or 12 shots in, which she could have done, she might have actually ended up with uh, uh, a much higher score. Uh, I think probably because she would have got stun assist off the 
uh, Object 430 that was up near the cops in, in the north. She might have been able to get some damage assist by uh, wounding him or stunning him. She also, or rather Talon, got four direct hits on the enemy because he's very accurate. He managed to put those shells exactly onto the target. 15 splashes as well. Damage of 872 hit points, of which 688 were more than 300 meters. So there was some shots that did damage at close range. One hit by way of splash damage. Yeah, the enemy RT did get close to him on a few times. Uh, they were actually splashing him and stunning him mainly because I think they were after the Nazhorn and they just got him by accident. Five enemy vehicles were damaged, none was destroyed, so he was just one more hit on a different tank and he would have ended up with a Confederate because he would have matched the Hellcat because uh, he had six and zero and Talon's only got five and zero. So it does show you need to spread those shells around to new tanks each time. Uh, if the, the more tanks you you hit, the more chance you've got of getting that medal. So uh, do spread it around, but also do focus on making those shells work for you by uh, putting the shells onto targets, which you know are going to get hit by your teammates, and thereby it's going to yield you some stun assist out of it as well. 921 hit points of stun assist or 15 stuns. He read, did actually stun quite a lot of tanks, which actually did, they did get hit because they could be seen by our teammates and therefore they put the shells in the moment the uh, enemy was stunned. And Angelina did that as well. 37,320 credits for the game, 80,000 for completion of the mission, 117,320 altogether. And ammunition really cost him very little indeed, so he ended up with a massive profit of 110,250 credits for the game. 1,284 XP times 2 for the first victory, 2,568 experience points altogether. So, yes, he's had another good ga game in the Hummel. I think, really, we ought to introduce a new level of difficulty to both players. I know we say that this both of them should try and get an ace tanker, but I think they ought to try in an RT that's different from the ones they do the previous week. What do you say? If we if Angelina wasn't allowed to use the 212A and Talon wasn't allowed to use the Hummel for that week, that might increase the level of difficulty, but it also might give them a different chance or a better chance of getting that ace tanker. So uh, yeah, I'll suggest them that to them. And of course they can then come back and say, nope, not gonna do that. <laughs> why should I why should I not play with my best arty? Or um, no, we're, we're not. We're, we're fond of playing those other those are uh, RT these RT. So we're going to keep playing these for the meanwhile. I uh, just just a suggestion to uh, to make it more difficult. I, I know somebody actually had an idea a while back was that uh, what you would do is if you have a, a streamer online uh, that you would actually play the tank that killed you in any battle. And so if you were playing, say, uh, a heavy tank such as a KV-2 and you got hit by RT and killed by RT, then you'd have to play the RT as the next vehicle. And if your RT then got shot and killed by, say, a Cromwell, then you'd have to play the Cromwell in the next one and so on and keep moving around. So you keep being forced to choose a different vehicle to play the game in the next time to, uh, uh, to try and get your ace tanker. But uh, it's just a thought. I know you love doing it with the RT, but uh, uh, let's see if you can get an ace tanker in either a tier 5 or a different RT to the ones you normally use. Because it might be that you'll be better in a different RT than you are in these ones at the moment. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed both those replays. Talon is going to probably be enjoying his weekend lion. Angeline's already conceded that uh, Talon's got it. Uh, so, yes, it's just going to have to be a chance that they get it right next time. If you enjoyed this replay, please give it a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.